All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this lunch and learn brought to you by family partners of Morris and Sussex County. My name is Patricia, and I'm here with FSB Diane Varga, who is from Family Partners of Morris and Sussex County. Diane, welcome. Thank you, Patricia. So we are happy to do this lunch and learn because basically we find a lot of families, they are not aware about services and resources in the community. And because we understand the struggle and we know the pain is real, we want to make sure that families that are having some challenges out there, they understand that we are here to support and that they are not alone. So we're going to go over que some questions uh, that we hear from families. And at the end, if you have any questions, we're going to be able to answer those questions, but we're going to do it at the end when we finish it with the recorder. So like that, you feel comfortable asking those questions and we can clarify any confusion, you know. So the first question, Diane, that I have for you is about what is Family Partners, also known as FSO? Would you please uh, um, clarify that? Okay, Patricia, um, Family Partners or FSOs are family-run, county-based organizations that provide direct family-to-family -family peer support um, education and advocacy to family members of children that have emotional, behavioral, or mental health challenges. Um, again, it's it's the it's the peer support um, and the you know the advocacy and the resources that we provide for families. Right. Thank you, Diane, for the clarification. So, Diane, um, if a caregiver wants to get in contact with family partner, how a caregiver can contact family partners? There are um, two ways, basically, that they can contact family partners. Um, once a family would contact Perform Care and um, it's deemed that CMO services are something that the family needs, um, our FSO team coordinator attends those meetings when they have the initial meetings with families and offers the family of the, cho the choice of having the um, FSO services. Of course, it's always a choice for the family if they want these services. At that point, if the family decides that they want a service like FSO or family partners, as we're called, um, we would the team coordinator would then assign a family support person to get in touch with the family and then start the process in as far as, you know, again, support, education, and advocacy. Right. And something that you just mentioned, Diane, you mentioned it about this is a choice. Uh, yeah, this is good to clarify. This is family choice in boys. So it's important for, for families to know that. Right. Thank you for, for that clarification. Um, Diane, um, if a family decide that they want services with FSO, uh, how exactly they can get in contact and what is the process for doing that? Okay, again, if it is um, through CMO, that meeting would be established and those services, but a family can also um, contact us through our warm line. And I believe Patricia has shared our website information in the chat. And um, a family could reach out on our warm line and have a discussion with a family support partner in regards to what their needs are. And then that family partner could address those needs and refer them either to perform care if they're not already involved. Or sometimes we have a family that would call in and is just interested in a support group, not so much services, but just support for themselves. And we would give them the information on our support groups at that point. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, something that you just mentioned, I want to remind everybody, the link for the website for the organization is there in the chat. So, um, you know, if you guys needed that link, it's right there. Uh, another question that we find a lot when working with families or sometimes when families are looking for resources, FSO or Family Partners of Morris and Sussex County, is this a service that will cost money to a family if they decide that they want to reach out to us? For, for FSO services, there is no charge for any family. Depend, it does not depend on income. There is, there is no charge across the board for these services. So now you know it is free. If you know a family that can benefit from any type of services, please let them know that we are here. 
Um, another question we have in here is, uh, because we encounter that question a lot when working with families, um, is a FSP a therapist? I, I laugh because I get this question a lot. Um, uh -huh. I, and often, you know, often when you work with a family, I always open up by saying to a family, just so you're aware, I am not a therapist, but I am a caregiver who, while our journeys might not be exactly the same, I understand the journey and I'm here to support you in any way I can with resources and um, and, and supports and things like that. But again, we are not therapists. We do not give therapeutic advice. Um, again, we can give resources where you might be able to find that, um, like you know, psychology today, where you can you know look into those kind of resources if needed. But no, we are not therapists. <laughs> and, and basically, uh, that's good to clarify that sometimes, like uh, if you ask. Uh, an FSP a question and we don't have those services. What we do is that we search in the community what organization is available out there that can provide those services and we refer the family to that organization. Okay, thank you, Diane. Uh, another question that we get a lot, um, sometimes we, uh, we um, uh, family ask about uh, you know, legal advice, uh, an FSP, is an FSP allowed to provide legal advice to families? Yes. Um, family support partners are not allowed to give any sort of legal advice. What we do, again, is we would supply resources. If there was a need for resources that pertain to um, anything legal, again, we would look for resources and be more than happy to supply them to the family. But we do, we do not give any sort of legal advice. Okay, thank you. thank you. So Diane, now we know that an FSP is not a therapist. We cannot provide legal advice. So how can an FSP can assist the family if a family is reaching out to us? So how, you know, can an FSP support the family? The basic ways we can support again is resources, advocacy, and support. I will tell you when I have a new family, I often talk to my families and say, you know, I know what the journey can feel like. And I know yeah. sometimes, you know, you could feel like you're a piece of that mainland that kind of broke off and you're floating out there by yourself. Well, my job is to bring you back in and let you know that there's people here to support you and you're not alone. And that is the focus of my job in at our jobs in providing those resources, the advocacy and the support that's needed. Great, great information. And Diane, I would like to break down a little bit more because when we, we mentioned to families about advocacy, education and support, would you please explain um, support? What, you know, exactly what is support when we're working with families? Support can mean um, many things. Um, you, you can support a family just through, you know, the everyday challenges of, you know, just reminding them that, you mm -hmm. know, you are a good caregiver. This is exactly. just a bump in the road. And, you know, we're here to, to, to help you, you know, get back on the road to where you need to go. Um, support could be in the way of support groups. I mean, we have, you know, a mom's group, we have a dad's group, we have a Spanish speaking support group. Um, we also have um, support in regards to these kind of presentations where we can refer a family to our YouTube channel where they can watch these kind of presentations at their leisure because sometimes they're unable to, to join these lunch and learns. Um, and then we also have a private mom's Facebook page where my moms support each other throughout the week. So it's, it's almost like a community between the support groups and these kind of um, resources, you know, caregivers are also able to support each other and share their journeys and, support, you know, and supply resources to each other also. In, in relation to education, because uh, keep in mind, uh, sometimes when a family approach an FSP, they might going through some challenges in relation with the school system or other challenges. 
Uh, would you please, in general, uh, elaborate, you know, in relation to education, what else we do also? Education, um, again, depending on the family's needs. Um, for instance, if you have a caregiver who has just had a child with a diagnosis of possibly ADHD, um, we have resources available where we can supply resources through um, webinars, things like that. Um, if it's a caregiver who has concerns or is having struggles with a school and IEPs, we as FSPs can help to the best of our knowledge with an IEP, but then we also have outside resources where we can refer them to where they are, you know, much better versed in supports and IEP process and letters and things like that. So there's all sorts of outside resources where we can have them also reach out for additional support. Okay. And in relation to advocacy, uh, would you please, um, you know, uh, clarify how we can help the family to advocate for services on behalf of their families? Would you please go over on that? Advocacy, when I work with my families, is, is helping them get their voice back and helping them realize that, you know, they are a part of a team, whether it be a school team, a team that where they're involved with CMO and FSO, they're part of the team. And sometimes families through this challenge are so, you know, overwhelmed with what's yes. going on, they forget that they have that voice. So that's my job to remind them that they have that voice and get us back on the road where they can start advocating for themselves again. Yeah, and another thing, Diane, that is important to remind everybody, uh, sometimes like uh, if you have a child that is having some challenges and you are a struggle, sometimes emotions can be high. So we try to kind of have a discussion with families, like if you're gonna talk with a provider, you know, write things down, uh, take notes and what's, you know, what's important at that moment. So basically we help families, we guide families through the whole process itself. All right. Another question, Diane, um, does a person need to be open with CMO in order to receive services with FSO? No, they, they do not, um, but the services would be different. In order to have that peer to peer support, you would need to be open with CMO. If you are a caregiver who just has some questions, um, needs resources or needs support, you could call into our warm line that you would get a family support partner and we would have a conversation. And if it was just basic you know, needs as far as, do you have a support group or do you have a, um, a resource that we can do that way through our warm line. That, that's good that we clarified that because some families think that in order to receive services with FSO, they need to, have to be open with CMO. And um, uh, Diane, I would like you to go over, you know, when a family approach an FSP, can you do like a one-on-one -on -one meeting or family visit per se, uh, even though the family is not open with uh, CMO? We can do, you know, if the warm line call comes through to me and I am, you know, working with the family and addressing their needs, I can, I can do that, you know, to address those needs as, mm -hmm. as, as, as a, as a one-on-one -on -one call, you know, um, if it extends further than that, where the needs, you know, I feel have a necessity to maybe make a phone call to perform care, um, then I would refer them also to that, um, that number. Right, and it's important to know also that because this is family voice and choice, if the family prefer to discuss their needs or their challenges over the phone, it's okay. If the family wants to do virtual meetings, it's okay. So whatever they feel comfortable, we use all the platform, wherever they feel comfortable. Um, Patricia, yeah. I would just like to clarify one thing also. When mm -hmm. we talk about warm line, I know with my families, sometimes warm line to them means something at the end of our journey. When yeah. a family is empowered, um, as an FSP, services don't stop for that family. I, if I have a family who is empowered and FSO service has technically closed, my family always has the option of utilizing my number at any time to call for additional resources and services 
Plus everything else within family partners stays open. Our support groups, our lunch and learns, our Facebook pages and our YouTube are always available to them. None of that ever changes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Diane, another question we have in here. Is FSO open 24 <laughs> seven? FSO is not open 24 <laughs> seven. FSO is technically open from nine to five. That being said, as a family support partner, I can schedule phone calls with families at a convenient time for them. I do evening calls for parents that work. I do early morning calls for a parent who has only availability then. Um, but I will, I will clarify that we are Monday through Friday, nine to five. So as a as a FSP, it's very important for me when I first talk to a family to have a family understand that because the last thing I want is a family to reach out to me on a Saturday and feel that I'm not there for them. So it's my job to let them know right from the first meeting when I'm available. And if you do reach out to me on a Saturday, when I will be getting back to you. Because again, I don't want any family to feel that they've been left behind or they're not being heard. Um, what I could also do is provide other resources if there's a need, if they ask for it, where there is 24-7 support from an organization, something like Parents Inc., where they just need someone to talk to on a Saturday, or if there is a concern or a heightened issue with a youth, then they can always call if they're involved with CMO, the CMO night time um, after hours line, which will be more than happy to help them also. Great. I want to emphasize in something in relation to hours of operation. So basically, because we are um, family voice in choice, um, let's say like a, if a, a family uh, can only schedule family visits, let's say at seven o'clock, uh, the FSP will make adjustment to accommodate the family. Um, and let's say like if the family need uh, or somebody is calling, let's say, uh, Seven o'clock, I'm just giving an example. Uh, and the FSP is available all the time, you know, they can have that discussion. So not just because we're working from, you know, within business hour, that doesn't mean that it's gonna be nine to five. It's just basically, we try to see, uh, you know, and accommodate, you know, the schedule for the family as well. All right, so this is good to know all of that. And now that we kind of have a summary or an overview about FSO, FSP and all of that, Diane, let's discuss about um, the support groups because we do have support groups and we want families to know that we are here. <laughs> Definitely. Um, we have a few support groups. Um, uh -huh. I will start by telling you about the Mom Squad, which runs on Thursday evenings from six to seven. Um, my moms that join this group are a great group of supportive and caring moms and caregivers who are very welcoming to anybody new that comes into the group. Um, they are very supportive of each other. Um, we welcome anybody to come. And if you're not comfortable, if you're not sure it's for you, I always say come in off camera, off mic, observe, and hopefully you find something that brings you back. Um, we also have a dad's group that's called the Hero Huddle, and that is on Wednesday evenings from seven to eight. I had the opportunity to sit in on one of their groups. And I know for dads, it's difficult. It's like, oh, support group, I don't need therapy. This is not therapy. This is a great group of men who have honest, open conversations about their struggles. And again, very supportive of each other. We have another group. It is a Spanish speaking group that Patricia, I will have you speak to that group. So basically, yeah, thank you, Diane. So basically um, we also have a group in Spanish for um, Spanish speaking. And basically um, what we do is, it's similar to the Moon Squad. So we meet every Tuesday at 7.30. And uh, what we do is that we choose like a topic of discussion and then we take it from there. Um, and like, I know that you, you families, Diane, uh, they are more active in Facebook. 
uh, um, in this group, um, the group of the apoyo, basically people are more active through WhatsApp. So basically it's whatever work, you know, we try to make exactly. sure that we reach out everybody. So that, and that we are here. Um, Patricia, mm -hmm. I just want to also include as far as the moms group, we also have a private mom squad Facebook page. That group is there for moms and caregivers to support each other during the week outside of the support group. Um, mm -hmm. There's probably about 60 moms on there now. They're great. They share resources. Also on the group, we, I share daily, hopefully uplifting quotes in the morning to get everyone's morning started. And we share upcoming seminars that are outside of the family support organization. So um, caregivers have the opportunity to join those if they um, have a need. Great. I, I also want to clarify because I know that we mentioned about the dad group. Um, basically, is any person, uh, any male that you know is taking care of a child is welcome to to the group. So any male is okay, you know. Exactly. Um, yeah, I just want to clarify that. So how a person, let's say, if a caregiver want to join the support group, how the person can have access to the group. If a person wants to join the support group, again, the website that is in that chat, you can go to our website, you will see support groups, you just click on that, it'll bring you down to whatever support group you wanted to join, you click and you register and Zoom will send you a, a link that you can use weekly to join those groups whenever you would like to. And now that we're talking about the support group, I want to remind everybody, the link for Family Partners website is right there. Uh, in that link, if you go in that link, you're going to find the support groups, the resources we utilize, and everything about family partners is right there because it's that the website right there. Um, another important thing that I want uh, Diana to go over, um, if a caregiver is, uh, let's say like a caregiver has a youth with some challenges or a child, challenges or, you know, so, some challenges and, and the person is not sure who uh, to call. Uh, because sometimes family get confused. Uh, they don't know if to call for phone care or to call a therapist or to call a doctor. So is that okay for a family to reach out to an FSP and just for, for guidance through the process? Because we get that a lot. So that's why I'm asking that question. Yeah, I mean, as, a, as an FSP, I would, I would hear what the caregiver is saying, I would have an, you know, get an understanding of what their needs were. And again, give them referral or references of where they should reach out, you know, um, again, I won't give them a doctor or anything like that. That's not my area of expertise. But um, if I felt it was um, a um, situation where a call to perform care, would be the best thing. I would refer them to perform care who could go through their criteria and then decide if the family needed services and they could take it from there. Great. I want to remind everybody um, also to clarify that family partners or when a family is working with an FSP, we are HIPAA compliant. The only person we have communication will be with the care manager. And the reason for that is because we work in collaboration with the care manager organization. So it is a safe place. When you're working with your FSP, um, you know the information or whatever you share with the FSP is gonna be safe. Um, I know that we mentioned it, that we're gonna take some questions and I know like uh, I'm sure, um, you know, the participants may, may have some questions. So we're gonna stop the recorder and we're gonna start, um, you know, clarifying and taking questions. So I just wanna say thank you very much, Diane, and thank you everyone for joining us. And I'm very happy that everyone is taking the time to be here with us, because I know that a lot of families are gonna benefit from this. A lot of families, they don't know about this information. At least we have something in here that can clarify those questions. So I'm gonna stop the recording.